G'day guys, my name is CJ. The iPhone 11 Pro is one of the most complete iPhone packages released in years. And it's definitely one of the best phones on the market right now. And if you've been keeping up with the channel, I've already made a video outlining five reasons to consider buying this phone. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out by clicking up here or in the description below. But in the name of balance, today I'm gonna to give you five legit reasons not to buy the iPhone 11 Pro. So now the first reason not to buy the iPhone 11 Pro is the fact that it's still living in 2017 with its notch screen. Now regardless of how nice the screen actually performs, if you compare the front and sides of the phone with the equivalent 10 or 10S, you'd be hard pressed to see any real difference. The back has been tweaked very slightly thanks to the new camera module, though some might actually argue that's for the worst. So in an age where flagship phones have barely a hole punch or no notch and bezel at all, the iPhone 11 Pro, and I guess also the iPhone 11, is still looking seriously dated. Now staying on it being dated, my second reason for not buying this is the fact that it still uses a legacy port. What year is it? 2020, in a world where USB-C has basically taken over the world and is seen in almost any scenario, be it in cars, uh, airports, public places, Apple persists with the lightning port with the 11 Pro, which is weird considering both the MacBook and the iPad Pro have both adopted USB-C. Yet curiously, in the Pro model of the phone, we still have to deal with a proprietary system and carry an extra cable with us everywhere. Like many others, I've simply adopted my MacBook Pro's USB-C charger as my go-to power brick for everything, and I'd love nothing more than to add the iPhone to that list and just have one charger for everything. Come on, Apple. Well, you've given us a fast charger and wireless charging. Why can't you just give us a USB port as well? But maybe that's for the iPhone 12, maybe? So now the third reason is more about what's in a name. And that's in the fact that they called it a Pro. Is it though? For a device that is called Pro, it decidedly excludes features you'd argue that are prerequisites. The screen isn't a high refresh rate screen, there's no Apple Pencil support, and as we've seen in the previous point, it still requires an old proprietary cable for connectivity, which means even more dongles. There's also no multitasking ability either, which is especially weird with the Max version, given it's got such a big screen. Now, of course, you can also argue it's got an extra lens for photography, but I'm not sure that the extra lens being a telephoto is important or useful enough to warrant the Pro label. The iPhone 11 still retains the two more useful lenses that I think, the ultra wide and the standard wide angle. And that culminates into the fourth reason not to buy the Pro model. And that's the fact that none of the features exclusive to the Pro actually add enough value to the majority of everyday consumers. I mean, why get a Pro when the iPhone 11 has basically the same processor, the same useful phone lenses, comparable battery life, and all in a similar form factor at a much more accessible price. And that brings me to the final reason why you shouldn't buy the phone, and that's price. I mean, the 11 Pro is exorbitantly expensive to the point where it's laughable, even for 2020 standards. Starting at 1,750 Australian dollars and maxing out at 2,500 Australian dollars for the top spec model, it's ridiculous. I mean, not even the S20 Ultra with 5G can top it at 2,000 Australian dollars recommended retail. All it shows is that you have to pay to be part of Apple's excellent ecosystem. I mean, ultimately, it's an excellent phone, but you can't really escape the fact that the 11 Pro's price is a massive negative. Like, I mean, a massive, massive negative. Not many people can afford to spend 1,750 Australian dollars on a phone. I mean, that's basically the price of two and a half one plus seven. So yes, this is a bloody expensive phone that is by no means perfect, but are these reasons enough to turn you off? I think it certainly will for a lot of people. The bottom line is, the iPhone 11 Pro isn't for everyone, but that's what the iPhone 11's for, and I'd always point friends and family in that direction if they want an iPhone. It's basically the same phone in where it matters for far, far less. Anyway, what do you guys think? What are your reasons not to buy the iPhone 11 Pro? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoy what you've seen today, give us a like and do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. As always, say good day, everyone for me. Cheers.